that you shouldn't miss out on your CV when applying for accounts and finance roles would be your achievements. Now, most people think that means, um, I've got my qualification, that's an achievement. That is not what I mean at all. So again, I'm gonna use an analogy that I often use with candidates and it is, right, okay, so you've got yourself and another candidate going for exactly the same role. Let's just say a management accountant's role for argument's sake. Um, and you have just got exactly what it is you do as a management accountant, so accruals, prepayments, um, P&L, um, and then putting your comment together at, commentary together at the end of the month. The other candidate has got all of that and then they add on what they, where they've added value or where they've been involved in an additional project um, within the business that's outside of the normal remit. So in a management accountant, it could be they've been involved in development of reports or they've looked at um, system implementations or looking at process improvement um, or even just coming up with a really, really simple um, workaround on a system that made things a little bit speedier at the end, of, at, well, at month end. So that's kind of the number one tip. Well, number two links very much to tip number one. Um, a lot of accountants will miss off that they've done the basics. So you've got to put yourself in an employer's shoes. So have a think about what you actually do in your role or even have a look at the job spec um, for the role that you're applying for. If that role says you need experience with currency and you've not put a multi-currency on your CV, put it on your CV if you've done it, of course, um, and just making sure you've got those basic elements of what it is that you actually do, because the amount of times that that's been missed off a CV that I've sent to one of my clients um, and they've gone, well, this person hasn't got a curls and prepayments experience. I'm like, well, actually they do. It's just not on their CV. If you've already got it there, it's got to help, uh, help you and help me and save everyone a little bit of time going back and forth. Tip number three would be facts and figures. So I'm kind of repeating myself, but if it's not there, and an old saying I used to say in my old role was if it's not tracked, it's not fact. And that very much goes, can apply to your CV. So if you've been involved in a project that's helped send, save 10 grand um, off a product line within a manufacturing company, for example, put that on your CV. Um, if you've spotted fraud and you've managed to help the business get money back from that fraud or an R&D claim, whatever it may be, put the facts and figures on there. If you're in account um, accounts payable and accounts receivable, then you wanna be talking about volumes and value. So how many invoices are you processing? What value are those um, invoices? And are they in different currencies? You've got to put some facts and figures on. At the end of the day, accountants recruit accountants. So the more facts and figures you've got on there, the better it's gonna be.